Hello everyone, I'm Corey from Aquarium Co-op, and today I want to talk about changing water. How often we've talked about this, we made a guide about it, and why it's not common knowledge. Why can't we agree? What should you do if you're new to the hobby? What should you do if you've been in the hobby a long time? What makes sense? We made a guide to help you, but it's not helping. Why not? Well, let me show you. This is on Facebook, by the way, so if you're not following us on Facebook and you use Facebook, hop over there, type in Aquarium Co-op, follow us, you'll get stuff like this. And you can read through the comments, you can try and help people, or just absorb. Maybe you're new to the hobby, you just need to see stuff. So we, we put out an article that, not an article, a guide. How often should you change your fish tank? Right? How much water? How often? This is what social media does. Everyone chimes in with their experience. Those experiences are true to them. I believe that. But I think a lot of us, when we're in social media, we're not thinking, will this apply to everybody? Does this only make sense because of the way I keep aquariums? Or would this be good advice for anybody? So this person at the top, actually, I do agree with their statement here. So many right answers. I believe it's situational. And that is definitely true when it comes to changing water. There's a lot of factors. How many fish? How many plants? How often? What's your water look like? Do you have a disability? There's a lot of factors. But I want to I wanna highlight how it could be hard for someone who's new to the hobby, or even if you're seeking information, maybe you're not new, maybe you're just going, well, am I doing it right? I want to reaffirm. Everyone's got a different take. This person, I don't change water, I just make it level. I don't change water, I just top off the tank. Have great plant growth and healthy fish. Great, how many fish do you have? What size tank? How many plants? How long has it been set up? Has it been a week and a half or 10 years? Don't know. Andrew says, as often as it needs to be. My 30 gallon has many plants I almost don't need to. I just do it to get the sediment out of the gravel once a month. Fair. When my water levels in my planted tank goes down, I pull out another bucket of water and water my house plants. Then I fill it up with the chlorinator. There's a good tip in there that a lot of people would miss. When water evaporates, it leaves behind everything but the water. So like any minerals like calcium and stuff, any nitrates, ammonia, nitrite, any toxins, all that stays there. It keeps getting more and more concentrated. Barbara here, very smart to pull out another bucket of water and then put in like two buckets of water. That dilutes everything back down. Ideally, your tap water is better than the tank water. That's why we change water. And then we use some dechlorinator to make that safe and kind of bind up the ammonia and things from breaking the bonds. I never change water and I haven't for years. All my fish are alive and healthy. I just add more water as it evaporates. You know, it could be very true. They could have one neon tetra in a 55 gallon tank. You know, I doubt they have an Oscar in a 10 gallon tank. It's really hard if, if I sit here and go, well, I haven't kept aquariums before. Which person do I listen to, right? This person asks a good question. Is it just nitrates we care about? My planet tank has zero nitrates every week. Then a bunch of people reply and help him. And no, it's not just that. There's pH and there's other things and, and stuff. But by even just trying to teach just like one of the main culprits of changing water, it also helps confuse other people. So that's not great. When I had tanks, I did weekly change out. 80% one week, 50% the next week, 30% repeat. Worked well for maintaining healthy fisheroos and water parameters. I also use Seachem Products Prime, Stability, and Purigen. The Purigen I'd keep in multiple packs and swap them out and clean them. My water was like glass. So now that we've read that whole thing, we know, oh, that person really cared about how clear their water was. Maybe not necessarily parameters for the fish or the plants. You know, they had a, a different type of schedule, but it worked for them, right? Here we go. Hope everyone who tops off their tank instead of water changes is checking their KH, GH, and pH against their tap water and not just their nitrates. Water changes keep parameters, parameters stable, remove hormones and other dissolved minerals that could accumulate. KH can be depleted, pH can swing, hardness can build up if you consistently are if you are consistently topping off for evaporation. I water change weekly between 20 and 50% depending on the tank. Now that I would say that is someone thinking, is this advice that I'm seeing all around me, is this going to be good for everybody? They actually put themselves into the teacher mindset and go, oof. People just follow in any of these blindly, they could run into some problems. And so there were some people that didn't even understand our guide. That's always disappointing when we, we try to, you know, try to do something. And this guide here, we went through so many versions and tried to get people like 
that don't have aquariums to understand it. We thought if we can get them to understand it, we can get someone new to the hobby to understand it. And so we broke it down into the, the most basic levels we could. If your nitrates are above 50 parts per million, change water. If yes, change 30% of your water, then proceed to week two. If it doesn't, not above 50, then you don't have to worry about it. You get to week two, is it still above 50? So you changed your water last week and you're still above 50. Oh, increase the water changes up to 50%. That's up from 30%, right? So we go, oh, we changed water last week and we're still above 50. All right, we need to try and balance it some more. So let's up the water change amount. If no, so if it was not above 50, you don't have to do water change that week. You can skip that week. Here, if your nitrates level were the exact same as week one, congratulations, you've achieved a balance in your aquarium which means a weekly water change at 30%, assuming you keep the same amount of fish and food you're feeding, you'll basically stay current with your tank. And then we go to week three. Are your nitrates higher than week two? So like they're still climbing, right? They're still like, oh, they're going up and going up and going up. If yes, your aquarium is very highly stocked, performing a 50% water change every four days until your nitrates drop below 50 parts per million. That's the advice we have. So now it's like, Look, you're still going up. We're going to tell you, let's let's change water like kind of like twice a week. We got to get them below 50 to try and even just understand what's going on in this aquarium. If they didn't go up higher than week two, great. Go on to week four. And then at week four, you know, are the levels still higher than week three? If they're still higher after doing a 50% water change every four days, we recommend reducing the amount of fish you're keeping in that aquarium. To temporarily alleviate the strain in the aquarium, we recommend feeding every other day. So we're reducing food, continuing to change 50% of the water every four days. So we are trying to guide them to getting that balance of, well, we got to do less food, less fish, more water changes. And then if levels are still good, still the same as week three, right? You kind of have to fall down this thing and actually do the experiment to see how you would fall. But... If the levels are the exact same as week three, congratulations, you've achieved balance in your aquarium by maintaining 40% water changes once a week. Now test once a month to make sure you're staying on track, right? And so ongoing, you test your nitrates and you adjust. As your fisher plants grow, your nitrate levels will change. Make sure you test at least monthly once you've found your balance, update your water change schedule as needed. And so that was our best attempt at trying to get the information across that's, I just wanted to highlight that and maybe we can, as a, a community, try and make the start making the shifts in our brain from, yes, this works for me, but if I don't tell a whole story about why it's working for me, maybe we make a shift in our brain to go, okay, what advice could I give that would most likely help others um, with them not knowing the whole picture? I just wanted to loop you guys in on that, try to make the hobby better. All of us can pitch in just a little bit. Maybe you're not into this. Maybe you're into something else. Uh, and also show some of the struggles that we have in business and why maybe not every business has been successful at teaching things and why we aren't all on the same page about so many topics in the hobby. It's kind of the wild west of like, oh, they have luck doing this. Someone else does a complete opposite and has the same luck. Maybe the takeaway thing if you're new that just because you've seen all these opinions doesn't mean any one of them is the correct one. It could mean that five of them are correct, right? And you've got to kind of choose what is the information I can take from this and apply to what I'm doing, knowing that as I learn and collect information, I'll be able to now discern what I think works for me and doesn't work for me. So good luck out there. I hope to see you on our Facebook and in the forums and in the YouTube videos and everywhere to those of you that did leave a comment and to trying to help thank you you're part of the solution so as we keep working towards it we'll make a better hobby for everybody we hope you enjoyed this video we actually picked another one that we thought you might like so click on it right here